Five philosophers P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4 are sitting around a circular table with a bowl of rice at the center of the table. And there are just five chopsticks, chopstick 0, chopstick 1, 2, 3 and 4. The job of the philosopher is to think. The philosophers keep on thinking and whenever they feel hungry they will decide to eat. But for a philosopher to eat, he should get hold of two chopsticks. Here each philosopher is having one chopstick to his left and one chopstick to his right. So in order to eat, the philosopher get hold of two chopsticks, one from his left and one from his right, and then he can eat. When finished eating, he will put down the chopstick back on the table. So here there are five philosophers and there are only five chopsticks and each philosopher needs two chopsticks to eat. So it is certain that we cannot allow all the philosophers to eat at the same time. So the requirement is we should give chance to all the philosophers such that all of them eventually eat. But since the number of resources or number of chopsticks are less, the philosophers should be synchronized in a proper way. Here we can see the philosopher P0 needs the chopstick 0 and chopstick 1 to eat. Philosopher 1 needs chopstick 1 and chopstick 2 to eat. Philosopher 2 needs chopstick 2 and 3 to eat. Philosopher 3 needs chopstick 3 and 4 to eat. Philosopher 4 needs chopstick 4 and 0 to eat. So we can see the right chopstick of P0. The right chopstick of P0 is the left chopstick of P1. The right chopstick of P1 is the left chopstick of P2. The right chopstick of P2 is the left chopstick of P3. The right chopstick of P3 is the left chopstick of P4. And the right chopstick of P4 is the left chopstick of P0. So each chopstick is actually shared by two philosophers. Here P0 and P1 share the chopstick C1, P1 and P2 share the chopstick C2. But we should not allow two philosophers to access this one chopstick at a time. If P0 is using C1 to eat, we should not allow P1 to make use of C1. So here the chopsticks are the resources and the philosophers corresponds to processes. Each chopstick is a resource which is shared by two processes and we should not allow these processes, these two processes to access each resource at a time. So with respect to each chopstick or with respect to each resource, we should ensure mutual exclusion. We can ensure mutual exclusion with the help of binary semaphore. Here each chopstick is a shared resource and each chopstick is a critical section where mutual exclusion to be ensured. So with respect to each chopstick we can have a semaphore. So here we can have an array of semaphore. Each semaphore corresponding to each chopstick. Chopstick 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are semaphores corresponding to each chopstick. And in order to ensure mutual exclusion, we shall initialize these binary semaphores with the value 1 to allow only one process to access the shared resource at a time. Only one philosopher should access chopstick 0 at a time. Only one philosopher should access chopstick C1 at a time and so on. Now philosopher P0's left chopstick is C0 and right chopstick is C1. P1's left chopstick is C1 and the right chopstick is C2. And P4's left chopstick is C4 and the right chopstick is C0 since we are arranging them in a circular way. 
Thus, we can say generally a philosopher PI's left chopstick here is CI and the right chopstick is CI plus 1 mod 5. So for P4, the left chopstick is C4 and the right chopstick is C4 plus 1 mod 5, C5 mod 5, C0. So the philosopher keeps on thinking. Whenever he feels hungry, he will decide to eat. Then he should grab two chopsticks. So we shall keep an order. Let him pick up the left chopstick and then pick up the right chopstick. For that, the philosopher will execute a weight operation on the semaphore corresponding to the left chopstick first. And then will execute a weight operation on the semaphore corresponding to the right chopstick. If both the chopsticks are available, then the philosopher can start eating. When finished eating, the philosopher will execute a signal operation on the left chopstick and then on the right chopstick and he can move to thinking. For example, suppose philosopher P1 needs to eat, he will execute a weight operation on the semaphore corresponding to C1. Now C1 value is 1, showing that one process can enter the critical section. So that semaphore value will be decremented to 0 and P1 get hold of the left chopstick. Now P1 will execute the weight operation on the semaphore corresponding to right chopstick. The value is 1. The chopstick 2 can be accessed by P1. Value will be decremented to 0 and P1 get hold of the right chopstick. Having grabbed both the chopstick, now P1 can start eating. Now while P1 is eating, suppose the neighbor of P1, P0, feels hungry and he needs to eat. Then he will execute a weight operation on the semaphore corresponding to his left chopstick. It is C0. Now C0 semaphore value is 1. It will be decremented to 0 and the P0 get hold of his left chopstick. Then P0 will execute a weight operation on the semaphore corresponding to his right chopstick which is C1. But C1 semaphore value is 0 showing that no process can enter the critical section. So P0 cannot get hold of the right chopstick. He will keep on waiting here. Then after some time suppose P1 finishes eating. P1 will execute the signal operation on his left chopstick C1. C1 value will be incremented to 1. Then the right chopstick semaphore value C2 value will be incremented to 1. Means both the chopsticks are kept back on the table. Now P0 who is waiting on his right chopstick can get hold of the chopstick C1. Now C1 value is 1. It will be decremented to 0. P0 can get hold of the right chopstick and can start eating. So this solution ensures that two neighbors won't access the chopstick at a time. With respect to each chopstick or with respect to each shared resource, mutual exclusion is ensured by this solution. But this solution leads to some additional problems which we'll discuss in the next video.